infinite background. From the effects library, go to open effects and then search for the transform tool. Drop that on your image or video or whatever. Open up the inspector, scroll down, advanced options, change that to reflect and then zoom out and you've got yourself an infinite background. You can even change the pitch and the yaw to whatever you like. Well, hey, and that's what we're covering in this video. I've got a whole bunch of those super simple quick tricks to show you how to do some funky stuff in DaVinci Resolve with little to no effort. We're talking transitions, effects, generators, and we've even got a little bit of audio in there too. Talking of audio, this video is sponsored by Audio. They have a ridiculous offer at the moment where you can get a lifetime, yes, lifetime license to all of their music and sound effects for just 299 bucks. But I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. Let's kick things off with some super handy dandy generators. On the edit page within the effects library, click on generators, and then we have solid color. Drop that on your timeline, give it a click, in the inspector, you've got the color box, you give that a click and then you can change the color of this background. Super handy for any sort of title screens or just using as a general background, obviously. Get rid of that one. Above that, we have a four color gradient. Drag this one onto your timeline. Very simple once again. You can change the blend, the area where all these colors are coming together via the X and the Y. And then you can change each of the individual colors as required. Noise. I use both of those all the time, super handy. Next up, there are some fusion generators that do funky stuff like this. So let me show you how they work. Same place, effects library, generators. Scroll down until you see the fusion generators area and we have four within there. Starting off with contours. Drop that on your timeline. Open up the inspector, generators, contours. You'll see all of the controls within here. So you can change the number of layers, the offset, there's loads of parameters you can change within there. If we click play, you can see this one is animated. If we expand shape down the bottom, movement rate, this controls the speed of that movement. There's also versions. So there's six versions. We can click to do all the different versions to see what's been set. And if we go to number three, for example, then increase the movement rate. And now we have an animated version of this one. Next up, noise gradient. Drop that on there, very similar, different versions, all of which, if we hit play, do have some movement. This one isn't called the movement rate, instead it's called the seethe rate, but it does the same thing. Knock that up to change that and have a play with all of the settings to see what you can achieve. Underneath that, paper. I love this one, dead simple, doesn't move, but it's a real nice textured paper looking background. Use this for slideshows, titles, whatever you want. You can also change some of the settings to get it looking however you want. Texture, background. Drop that on there once again, last one, very similar, six different versions, all with different effects. Once again, change the sense of the contrast, the brightness, and the seed rate to make it move. Now, because these are all a color on black, generally, if you go to these settings, come down to the composite mode, change it to add, you can use this as an overlay on videos and images as well. Generators, bosh. Next up, part one of two, effects. And we're gonna kick things off with the dead simple, Drop Shadow. Got my PNG on my timeline using that paper generator. Within the effects library, simply go to open effects and then click on the little magnifying glass, find the search, and we're just gonna search for Drop Shadow. Drop that on the PNG and you'll get a nice Drop Shadow. Within the inspector, open effects, Drop Shadow, you can change the strength, the angle, the distance, the blur, and of course, the color. Just a simple vignette. Same place, open effects, type in vignette, and there's a simple vignette effect Drop that on your footage in the inspector, same place, open effects, you have all of the controls so we can change the size, the anamorphism, which is kind of like the width, the softness, and the color. If you want to get super fancy, there is an advanced mode which gives you even more control. Freeze frame, fast forward, and reverse. This is a dead simple one as well. No need for the effects library, just put your footage on the timeline, open up the inspector, go to the video tab, scroll down until you get to the speed change area, and we click on the little snowflake icon to just do a freeze frame. Alternatively, click on your footage and then you can click on this icon to make it play backwards. This icon will make it play forwards and then you can change the speed, either making it play faster by increasing that or knocking it down to slow it down. Easy peasy. Simple mask. With literally anything on the timeline, image or video, right click on the footage and then go to open in the fusion page. You'll see these nodes appear like so and then we just need to use one of these four controls here. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle, we'll drop it over here to the left and then connect it up to our media in. And then within our little preview window up here, 
we can change this to mask it to be whatever size or shape we like. We also have controls within the inspector. Exactly the same thing for the ellipse or this one here, which is the polygon. Drop that on there, connect it up, click around, fill that in, job done. Alternatively, you can do an ellipse mask directly on the edit page. Open up the effects library, go to effects and then search for shape circle. Drop that on your footage and you'll get a white circle in the middle. Within the inspector, scroll down and apply as mask. That will do a circle mask like so. You can then move this mask wherever you like. And if you go back to the video tab at the top and then use the position, you can move the position of the video within the mask itself to get it perfectly lined up. To move them both together, what you can do is right click on your footage, turn it into a compound clip, and then everything will move as one big go. Double vision effect. Click your footage on the timeline. Hold the Alt key or Option if you're on a Mac, drag upwards to make a quick duplicate. Click on the trim edit mode and then move this footage forward a few frames. Within the inspector, go to composite and change the composite mode from normal to screen and you can reduce the opacity if required. Hit play and you've got a simple double vision style effect. Stop motion drag. Very similar to the double vision, make a duplicate, but this time we're gonna to go to the open effects area and we're gonna search for stop motion. Drop that on the top footage like so. Then increase the frame repeat, jump back to the video tab, and this time just lower the opacity, hit play, and we've got a stop motion, double vision, drag kind of effect. Camera shake. Same area, once again, effects library, open effects, search for the camera shake effect and you'll find it within there. Drop that on your footage, hit play, and you've got a simple camera shake effect. You've got the main controls at the top, so you can change the motion scale, the speed scale, and the motion blur. And then you can also change all the individual elements, like how much pan, tilt, rotation, and zoom you have. You can even change the type of randomness and the type of wobbliness to get it looking exactly as you want it. Bonus tip, from the effects area within the effects library, grab an adjustment clip and put that over an existing transition like so. Then go to the open effects and grab your camera shake, drop that on there, and you can add some nice camera shake to any existing transitions. Corner pinning. Open up the effects library, go to open effects, and once again find that transform effect, and then drop that on your footage like so. From within the inspector effects, open effects, transform, change the control mode to interactive canvas, and then if you don't see these controls on screen, use the little drop down to open the open effects overlay, and then you can drag these corners wherever you like to pin this as required. Mirrored world. This one's perfect for any dronies out there. With your drone footage on the timeline, within the effects library, open effects, simply search for the mirrors effect. Drop that on your footage and you'll get a mirror effect like so. If you don't see the on-screen previews, once again, click the little drop down and make sure to enable open effects overlay. Then we can simply move this mirror around like so. In the inspector, there's also controls to add additional mirrors. You can add up to six and you can change it to be a rosette or a kaleidoscope instead. Hit play, job done. And breathe. Obviously, you're gonna need some music and sound effects to make all of these effects and transitions pop. And that's where this video sponsor Audio comes in. Audio currently have a really crazy offer where you can get unlimited access, lifetime license to all of their music and sound effects for just $299. That's a one-off payment for unlimited lifetime access. So what exactly is Audio? Well, Audio is a music subscription service that contains all of the music and sound effects you could ever need. And it's music from real artists, covering all genres like pop, rock, ambient, country, hip hop, and even cinematic bangers. And now they even have stems, so you can download the full mix or pick the individual elements that you need, which just gives you even more options to find the perfect music for literally any project. Plus sound effects like whooshes, risers, as well as ambient background noises and foley covering all of your sound effect needs. And all the stuff you download can be used in personal and client projects. So basically, you'll never need to pay for music or sound effects ever again. To get unlimited access to all of the music and sound effects for just $299, make sure to click the link down in the description below. Right, let's switch things up a bit. We're gonna talk about some audio and then we're gonna come back to some more funky visual effects. Now, before we get into it, you open up the effects library, you scroll down to audio effects. Most of them are listed in here. 
You can grab them, drop them on your audio directly on the timeline as you usually would, or you can drop these audio effects directly on the audio track so that it will affect every piece of audio you then put on that track. Simple. Right, now let's start off with the first, simplest, easiest one. Pitch. And it's always funny. It is. For this one, simply click your footage with the audio attached or just the audio itself, open up the inspector, go to audio, scroll down, you'll see pitch, click on pitch to expand the options, and then you can increase the semitones. If you're new here, hello. To increase the pitch or decrease it to give yourself a deeper voice. New here, hello. Distortion. Within the effects library, audio effects, scroll down, you'll find distortion pretty quick. Drop that on your audio. You'll get this little window pop up. You want to click on your little drop down at the top and we've got loads of cool stuff like first face. If you're new here, hello. HF buzz. If you're new here, hello. Lo-fi radio. If you're new here, hello. And of course, megaphone. If you're new here, hello. Robot, Robot voice. And to do it, you need to use something called the flanger. Flanger. Within the audio effects, grab flanger, drop it on your audio on the timeline. Your little pop-up will appear. Change the drop down to robot voice. If you're new here, hello, my, my name's Alex. Alex. Job done, robot voice. Daleks. Grab the modulation, drop that on your audio. Again, you know the drill, this little thing will appear. Change the little drop down. There's loads of options to play with within here, but for this example, just go to exterminate, hit play. If you're new here, hello, my name's Alex. Simple Dalek effect. Next. Telephone voice. You can only apply this telephone preset to an entire track, not an individual piece of audio. So I recommend you just set up a new track and call it telephone voice or whatever, and then you just put your telephone vocals on that track. So we're going to jump into Fairlight, open up our mixer, make sure it's open like so, and you'll see mixer over on the right. Make sure you're on the right audio track, I'm on my audio one, and then simply double click on this EQ area. The equalizer will appear. Click the little drop down, and there's an option down here for general telephone effect. Hit play. Hello, my name's Alex. And telephone effect applied. Now, last quick bonus tip sticking with audio effects from the same area within the mixer, double click on dynamics. You can change all of the dynamics within here. But once again, there's a bunch of super useful presets. We've got dialogue basic, compressor, a couple of dialogue levelers, as well as a music pumper. Everyone loves a music pumper. Audio effects, done. Next up, transitions. Everyone knows about transitions. They're pretty simple, easy, obvious, easy to understand, but there are some good ones you may have missed, so let's cover them. Oh, and never forget, if in doubt, in and out. From the edit page, effects library, video transitions, you've got all of your transitions within here. Nearly all of these transitions will look better if you give them a click, open up the inspector, and then change the ease from non to in and out. That gives it an acceleration curve, and it will make pretty much everything look better. For some of the fusion transitions, you won't get an option to set the ease. Instead, you'll see the word curve. For these, change the curve to easing, and then you've got these different in and out options, and you can experiment with these. I like to go with Expo on both, hit play, and it will give you a real nice acceleration curve. Boom, with that out of the way, let's start off with my first one, push. The push transition is a super simple way of animating things to come on screen in a pinch without messing around with keyframes or additional tools. From the video transitions area, simply search for push, grab the push, put it on this logo for example, hit play and it's just going to whip in. Give it a click, change the ease to in and out. There's also presets so you can change it to be left, right, up or down and then we hit play and it's a nice, quick, easy way to animate anything in or out. Luma fade. This one isn't built in, there's a tiny bit of work, but it's super quick. Grab the cross dissolve, put it on your edit point. Right click and convert to a fusion cross dissolve. Then right click once again and open in the fusion page. Double click on the cross dissolve little bundle and then click on dissolve one. Within the inspector, change the operation to erode and that's it. Jump back to the edit page and you've got yourself a Luma fade transition. Luma wipe. There's also a built in Luma wipe transition. Scroll right down, or you can use the search for search for Luma, find Luma Wipe, drop it on there, hit play, and you've got a Luma Wipe transition rather than a standard fade. Now here's a list of built-in transitions which I really like. They're actually quite easy to miss. All of these exist down at the bottom within the Fusion Transitions area. And first up, Block Glitch. Right at the very top, Block Glitch, and it gives you a really cool glitchy style transition. 
Once again, loads of controls within the inspector to make it look however you want. A couple down from there, camera shake. Camera shake does exactly what it says on the tin and does a nice camera shake transition, but it also has some additional RBG built in, which gives it a really cool glitchy, once again, style effect. RGB splitter. Scroll down or once again, use the search for RGB. Grab that, put that on there. And this one is very similar to the camera shake, but it just does a nice little fade between the two. But once again, with your red, blue and green. This one does have the curve, so we can change the easing to something a little bit more exciting. Job done. Paint on. This is a cool one. Either search for it or scroll down and find the paint on effect. Drop that on your edit point and it has this cool paint on style effect. And last but not least, burn away. Right at the very bottom within the FX transitions area, we have a burn away. We hit play and it just has a nice burn effect. We can also use the open effects controls to change the location. And within the transitions area, we can change the timing, the edge, the direction, the melt, the jar, the burn, all that sort of fun stuff. Now, don't forget for any of those transitions, once you've made any changes, you can simply right click the transition on the timeline and create a transition preset. This is my paint on preset. Click on OK. And then we don't need to amend the settings within the inspector anymore. Instead, whenever we open the video transitions, there's now a user area and I have my paint on preset. So it's always there, ready to go. Transitions done. Right, back to some more effects. And we're gonna start off with this. Tilt Shift Blur. This one's limited to the studio version, but I've got a free workaround as well. So I'll show you that in a second. Effects library, open effects, search for Tilt Shift Blur, drop that on your footage and you'll get a nice Tilt Shift effect. Once again, use the little drop down to select the open effects overlay, and then you can use this to put the location of the focus point, and then use the controls within the inspector to change the angle, the sweep, the in focus range, and all that other good stuff. Looks really cool on drone footage, but also works incredibly well to draw your audience's attention to screenshots and how-to clips and that sort of thing as well. Tilt shift for the free version. This isn't exactly the same, but it kind of works, so I wanted to show you. With your footage on the timeline, jump over to the color page. Grab a Gaussian blur from the effects library and drop that on your node. Click on this icon here to open up the window area. Click on the square and then click on this button to invert it. Then using the preview window, just select the area that you want to be in focus by clicking and dragging the handles. You can also change the sweep, the gradient by changing the red handles. Jump back over to the edit page and you've got a very similar faked tilt shift style effect. Paper edge effect. Within the effects library, go to effects and then search for paper edge. Drop the paper edge on literally anything, PNGs, images, videos, and it will put a paper edge effect around like so. In the inspector, you can change the color and the contrast to get it looking exactly as you like. Bonus quick tip, if you knock the edge roundness down, you can get a real simple way of putting a standard smooth border once again around pretty much anything. Another way to do a nice simple border around images, if they're a bit smaller than the frame like so, Simply right click on the timeline on the footage and then go to open in the fusion page. Then open the effects library within here, open templates and then click on edit. Search for colored border. Grab the colored border and drop it on the line like so and that will put a colored border around your image and you can change the softness, the width, the color, everything you need within there. Jump back to the edit page and that border will have been applied. Color grade transition. With your graded footage on the timeline, make a simple cut, then jump into the color page. On the first clip, right click within the nodes and reset all grades and nodes. Then jump back over to the edit page and simply apply any video transition to that edit point. I find the edge wipe works well. Give it a click within the transitions, just change the angle to 90. And then if we hit play, we'll go from non-graded to graded. Fast noise. From within the effects library, go to effects and then grab an adjustment clip and put it over your footage. Then go to open effects and search for fast noise and drop that on the adjustment clip. By default, it looks like this, but if we change the preset, we've got options for things like mist, smoke, and water surface, river, and heat haze. Water surface is really cool because it gives you a nice watery effect over images and text. 
mess with all the settings to get it looking however you like. It's a really cool one to mess around with. Polaroid. With an image or a video on the timeline, simply zoom it out so it's a little bit smaller. Move it up a single track and then go to the generators within the effects library and grab that paper generator we looked at earlier. Give that a click within the inspector, video, settings, go to cropping and crop this as required. Now you've got a Polaroid style effect. If you select both of those things on the timeline, right click and turn it into a compound clip. And then you can move this around as a single thing, rotate it, animate it and do whatever you like. Screen pump effect. Within the effects library, go to effects at the very top, grab an adjustment clip and put it on your timeline above your footage. Cut it so it's nice and short. Give it a click in the inspector, come on down and toggle the dynamic zoom. If we hit play, now we have a simple zoom out. If you want it to be a zoom in, we simply hit swap. Now, if we duplicate this on our timeline, we can do this quickly by holding the alt key and dragging option. If you're on a Mac, hit play. We've got a simple screen pump effect. Double exposure. Stack your footage on top of each other on the timeline like so. Select the top piece of footage and then jump over to the color page. Within the nodes area, right click an empty space and add an alpha output. Connect the blue from your main node to the little blue circle like so. Then open up the windows control and then you want to grab this bottom one here, which is your gradient. And then you can change this gradient to give you a kind of double exposure, fade together kind of effect like so. Anamorphic lens flares. Within the effects library, go to open effects and then search for glow. Grab glow, put it on your footage. Open up the inspector effects, open effects and glow, and then increase the spread and the HV ratio over to the right hand side. And that will give you horizontal streaks and then you can change the gain, the gamma, the saturation as required. To change the overall threshold, you've got shine threshold at the very top and you can adjust that as you need to. Scan lines. From the edit page, effects, open effects, just search for scan lines and then drop that on your footage. Within the inspector, simply change the line frequency as required, as well as changing the sharpness, angle, width, shift, and even the color to get this cool TV style effect. Bonus tip, within the inspector, scroll down to composite and change the type from overlay to something like hard mix. And you'll get a JPEG damage 8-bit style effect. Mess with the frequency, the sharpness, the line angle, whatever, and you can do some pretty cool stuff with it. Alternatively, JPEG damage. Within the effects area, search for JPEG damage, drop that on there, and then you have a nice JPEG damage kind of effect. You can mess with the quality as well as the resolution, the aspect ratio and the frequency scale. Honorable mention to the film damage effect, which gives you an old school, almost Western style effect like this. That's available in the free version. And if you're on the studio version, you have access to the analog damage effect, which is probably one of my favorites. We go to the preset and we've got things like early TV, black and white 1960s, clean VHS, and they're all really cool and really quite accurate. You've also got tons of controls to make it look exactly as you want it. And last, last, Last but not least, don't forget that if you open up the effects library, go to effects, scroll down to fusion effects, you've got things like binoculars, CCTV, digital glitch effect, a drone overlay effect, a digital SLR, night vision, video call, and video camera. Now, most of those work on the free version, but one or two are limited to the paid studio version. Bosh! I need to go for a lie down because that was a lot of stuff. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. I'll see you next time.